Madam Chairperson, distinguished delegates, distinguished representatives of the philanthropic community, fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly an honor to be with you here today, and I'm really looking forward to a fruitful dialogue on improving the health outcomes for women and girls. My comments will be brief. It is a tragic truth today that health care, education, and opportunity for the fulfillment of one's potential remain out of reach for far too many women and girls, and their right to health and well-being is systematically being denied. Nowhere do we see this more clearly than in the case of women dying during childbirth. And I think the data were mentioned in more than one of the opening statements. Today, maternal mortality is the largest health inequity in the world. Every minute, a woman dies while giving life. And there are 300 million women living with injuries and disabilities caused by complications of pregnancy and childbirth. The tragedy is that the vast majority of these disabilities and deaths can be easily prevented. We know the proven interventions that can save women's lives and improve health outcomes. To make motherhood safe, all women need at least three critical interventions. Family planning, skilled attendance at birth, and emergency obstetric care. In places where these reproductive health services are widely available, accessible and affordable, maternal and and newborn deaths are declining, and the well-being of families and communities is on the rise. To improve health outcomes for women and girls, we need strong health systems with strong supply chains, stocked facilities, and skilled health workers that can deliver a full range of health services and supplies. It's often reiterated that a functioning health system is a system that can deliver to women when women are ready to deliver. At the global and national levels, health partners are working closely, often under government's leadership, to strengthen health systems. But the demand outstrips the available resources. There is an opportunity for the philanthropic community to fill part of the gap. A growing spirit of partnership among development actors in the health sector is fueling greater possibilities and the potential for greater success. And our challenge is to make sure that the work underway to achieve the health-related Millennium Development Goals is coordinated and harnesses these poss possibilities to improve health outcomes for women and girls. UNFPA is working closely with various philanthropic groups to advance access to sexual and reproductive health and to promote women's empowerment and gender equality. Our experience shows that improving health outcomes for women and girls requires a comprehensive approach that tackles gender inequalities and protects human rights. We've also found that involving women and girls in the planning, programming, and monitoring is central to achieving success. We partner with a variety of foundations on significant initiatives such as improving the supply of contraceptives to countries with high unmet need and linking services for maternal health and family planning with those for HIV prevention. Given the resource constraints in many countries, we find that integrated approaches and services meet two important criteria. They meet the needs of women and they are cost effective. We also believe in focusing on adolescent girls to support their opportunities and choices to build a better future. Adolescent girls are amongst the most vulnerable of populations, and they continue to lack access to health services. In working with community-based groups and other partners, including foundations, we can together mobilize demand for and supply of services to those hard to reach and most neglected groups, generate pressure for maintaining public resources to the health and development sectors, and improve governance and accountability, which are at the foundation of success. 
One of our successful initiatives targeting adolescent girls takes place in Ethiopia, where families are provided with an incentive to keep girls in school. This project combines access to education with the provision of information on health, and it has shown impressive results in delaying early marriage and early pregnancy and improving health outcomes for women and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, as the world faces the impact of the devastating financial crisis to which Peter Salama has referred, investments in the social sector must not only be maintained, they must be expanded. To get the highest return on investments, women and girls need to be a priority focus. And greater progress in this area can be achieved through strengthened partnership with the philanthropic community. Let us continue to work together to meet the needs.